Hey guys! So, by the time World War II ended, the class of fast battleships had reached a point in its development where it was better to combine the destructive power and defense of dreadnoughts with the high speed of battleships. These ships accomplished many amazing things for all the governments in the war. The battleship Tirpitz, named after Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz from World War II, was the largest ship in the history of the German Navy, a titan that displaced over 50,000 tons and that was armed with 8 and 30 millimeter torpedoes. When the 823-foot Tirpitz was finished, it cost almost as much as 50 submarines or 200 million Reichsmarks, which would be about $10 billion today. The battleship was laid down on November 2, 1936 and launched on April 1, 1939 from Wilhelmshaven. Its sister ship, the Bismarck, was launched from Hamburg the same year. Now, these ships were truly massive. Nothing of that size was built in Germany before or has been since then. These battleships became notable symbols of the growing power of the Third Reich. Now, based on the original plan, the Bismarck-class battleships were to be used as the German Navy's main strike force in battles with the French and British navies in the North and Norwegian seas. However, during the war, German command had to use their battleships as raiders to disrupt British maritime communication with North America. Now, during its first and only mission in May 1941, the Bismarck sunk the British battlecruiser Hood in the Denmark Strait. The British response came quickly. The British Navy began to hunt the Bismarck. Three days later, the Bismarck was sunk. The British counted what they had spent after the battle. Eight torpedoes and 2,876 rounds of large, middle, and universal calibers. Now, the loss of the Bismarck made the German leadership rethink their use of the last super battleship. Hitler and Grand Admiral Erich Raeder treated the capabilities of large surface artillery ships without aircraft carrier support very carefully, so the Tirpitz was used extremely cautiously, therefore rarely. The Tirpitz took part in almost no battles, but its presence in the German Navy was still extremely important. Its existence presented great danger to the Royal Navy, trying to deliver supplies to the Soviet Union. Military leadership decided to send the battleship to Norway, to provide it with greater safety. The ship was based in inaccessible Norwegian fjords and turned into something ominous to scare the British Admiralty. Planning any operations started with the question, what will we do if the Tirpitz leaves its resting spot and comes out? On March 5th, the Tirpitz left Fjord, accompanied by three destroyers. They went to capture Allied convoys, the PQ-12 and PQ-8. The battleship went across the Arctic Ocean towards Bear Island. During this time, significant English naval forces were in the area, including their main forces, under the command of Admiral Tobey, who sunk the Bismarck. He was searching for the Tirpitz. Poor weather conditions prevented air recon on both sides, so the British couldn't find the German battleship, and the Germans missed both convoys. One German destroyer found a Soviet timber ship, the Izor, and sunk it after spending considerable time doing so. In the summer of 1942, the Germans were preparing a grand operational plan called Rosselsprung, Knight's Move. The plan included using many ships to create a focused strike and completely sink the PQ-17 convoy. Now, the Germans thought this would weaken the Allied support to the Soviet Union. But you could say it was only because the Tirpitz left its post during the peak of the operation that the English Naval Command ordered to send the PQ-17 convoy and sent its cruiser and destroyer escort back west to capture the Tirpitz. After entering the open sea, the Tirpitz sailed with destroyers to sink the PQ-17 convoy. 
they were attacked by Soviet K-21 submarines, led by Captain Nikolay Lunin. The submarine launched four torpedoes from a large distance, which was the basis for announcing that the battleship was damaged in the Soviet news. But unfortunately, this didn't help the fate of the PQ-17 convoy. Over the next three days, German submarines and planes gave them a serious loss. Out of 36 transport ships, 23 were sunk, and only 11 reached their destination. Without firing a single round or getting within 300 miles of the battle, the Tirpitz won one of the largest naval battles of the war. After the destroyers returned to the battleship, the Tirpitz didn't require repairs. In the future, the English studied the battleship's hull and saw no signs of torpedo damage or repairs. In September 1943, the Tirpitz participated in a German attack on Spitsbergen. This was the only operation where the Tirpitz used its main battery. The Germans approached the island, and after the battleship and destroyers fired at Berensburg and sent in a landing party. It's worth noting that the Tirpitz was not hit by enemy ship fire. During the course of its life, there were 26 attempts to sink the Tirpitz. After the K-21 attack, four months later, on October 31st, 1942, there was another attempt to destroy the Tirpitz using guiding underwater devices codenamed Wagons. The devices were human-controlled torpedoes. The devices should have been delivered to the Tirpitz location by being towed underwater using the Arthur fishing boats. It was almost successful. On October 30th, the boat with towed torpedoes was able to enter the Trondheim Fjord but when it was within 20 miles of the Tirpitz, a strong easterly wind with waves kicked up. On October 31st at 10 p.m., there was a loud grinding sound to the aft, and a diver found that both torpedoes were lost. The Tirpitz was less than 11 miles away at the time. The boat was sunk, and the crew walked to the Swedish border. Now, the first successful operation against the Tirpitz happened only a year later. On September 12, 1943, Soviet pilot Leonid Elkin searched for the Tirpitz in the Altenfjord in low cloud and rain conditions. He dropped out of the clouds three times and was under enemy AA fire. He dropped to an altitude of 160 feet and was able to take a good picture of his target. The pictures were immediately sent to the British Admiralty, who used them to plan a new operation. The British used new X-Craft midget submarines to attack the ship hiding behind an anti-torpedo net. Two midget submarines were able to approach the battleship, but they were noticed. Both ships dropped two-ton mines under their target, and the Tirpitz attempted to unsuccessfully distance itself from where it was anchored. After dropping their mines, the ships returned to the surface, but the crews were captured before the mine's timers went off. Despite the detected danger, the Tirpitz wasn't able to raise its anchor, and after a little while, there was an explosion. The first mine's explosion happened less than 30 feet from the Tirpitz's starboard side, and the second about 170 feet away. The explosions caused serious damage to the battleship. A fuel tank was completely destroyed, and one turbine was ripped from its place. This didn't directly threaten the ship with being completely sunk, but the left fuel tanks were sunk, and water flooded the ship in the double bottom where the ship was damaged. The battleship took on about 1,500 tons of water and was temporarily sent for repairs. Now, during the repairs from November 1943 to March 1944, there was only one blast. During the night on February 10, 1944, a Soviet long-distance bombing squad attacked the battleship. But because of poor weather conditions, only two planes reached their target 
and dropped their bombs. According to German officer notes, all the bombs were dropped on the coast and the ship wasn't damaged. By April 1944, the Tirpitz was repaired and could present danger once again. The British response to this threat was to approve Operation Tungsten. Significant naval forces participated in the attack, including two battleships, two escort aircraft carriers, two rapid light aircraft carriers, two cruisers, and 16 destroyers. This is the only way the British felt confident in approaching Altafjord, where the pride of the Kriegsmarine, the super battleship Trippets, was rusting amongst the Norwegian rock. Now, the results of Operation Tungsten are disputed. Carrier ships were able to bomb the German base and seriously damage the battleship's superstructure. However, it didn't result in a Pearl Harbor-level attack. The English couldn't deal a fatal blow to the Tirpitz. After this attack, Operations Planet, Braun, and Tiger Claw were planned. However, because of poor weather from April to May in 1944, the English had to cancel the three attacks. Operation Mascot happened in July 1944, however. By that time, the Germans had improved their anti-air defenses, especially smoke launchers, which made the attack unsuccessful, and the attacking planes couldn't execute their attack. In August 1944, the Tirpitz finally underwent sea tests, and soon after, the British again attacked, which had inconclusive results because of bad weather. Only in September 1944 did the British Operation Paravane finally have success. On September 14th, Lancaster bombers launched from Jagodnik near Arkhangelsk with tallboy bombs weighing five and a half tons and the capability to destroy 16 feet of concrete. Despite the smokescreen to defend the Tirpitz, one of the bombs hit the ship's bow, causing damage, making it practically unseaworthy. The Germans couldn't send the Tirpitz to a dry dock for repairs, so the battleship was transferred to Trosmo in October as a heavy floating artillery battery in case of an expected invasion in Norway. In its new location, the ship was still in range of British heavy bombers based in northern Scotland, and the British continued attacking the Tirpitz, not knowing that the Germans had decided not to repair the ship. On October 28th, bombers left as a part of Operation Obviate from Lossiemouth in Scotland to attack the ship. However, at the last moment, the ship was hidden by clouds and only one tallboy bomb exploded near the ship, damaging its port rudder. But the next time, on November 12th, during Operation Catechism, there was no smoke, no clouds, and no fighters above the Tirpitz. The ship was hit by three tallboy bombs. One glanced off the armored tower, but two more penetrated the armor and made a 200-foot hole in the starboard hull, causing a fire and a following explosion in the area under Tower C, while also knocking it off. In the end, the Tirpitz tilted and then capsized and finally sunk about 10 minutes after the attack to the west of Trosmoena Harbor, taking 950 out of the 1,700 crew down with it. Destroying the Tirpitz removed the last serious surface water threat to Allied communication in the North Atlantic and North Arctic Oceans. This let them transfer the main Royal Navy ships, escort aircraft carriers, rapid light aircraft carriers, battleships, and the battlecruiser Renown from the Atlantic Theater, where they were a fleet in being, to the Indian and Pacific Oceans, where they fought against Japan. The Tirpitz became a unique fulfillment of an idea from ancient Chinese colonel and philosopher Sun Tzu. Without firing a single shot at enemy ships, this ship was extremely effective. It occupied British attention in the North Atlantic for three years. During its time anchored in Norwegian waters, the Tirpitz was attacked from air ten times. Those attacks came from about 700 British and Soviet aircraft. There's an artificial lake near where the Tirpitz sunk that appeared in craters from tall boy bombs that didn't hit their target. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like, comment, let me know what you learned from this video, and we'll see you again next time.